Well, good morning and welcome to Real Life Church. Glad you're here today. We're kicking off a brand new teaching series looking at the life of Paul. Over the next eight weeks, we're going to examine his life. We're going to tear it apart and we're going to take from his life things we can put into practice in our own life. Well, maybe you're asking yourself right now, you don't know a whole lot about Paul. Or maybe you know everything about Paul. Well, I will tell you this about Paul. He is one of the most influential human beings that has ever lived. The mark that he left on Christianity is second to none, with the exception of Jesus. Paul gives us the most instruction on what it means to be a follower of Christ. Now, how did this insignificant Jewish leader, tent maker from the first century, from the town of Tarsus, I mean, how did he make an impact on the world? How did he get to where he was? How did he teach in a way that influenced so many different people? I mean, the way I talk about him makes him sound like he's bigger than life. I mean, it might even sound like he's a little bit better than us. But I'm going to tell you something. Paul was human, and he struggled, and he had real problems. And I will tell you this about Paul. He had some pretty bad eyesight. His health was pretty frail. He described himself as not very good looking. He had a, a fiery temperament, and man, could he hold a grudge. So why are we looking at this guy? I mean, we should be looking at this guy from a negative perspective, right? Well, God changed him. And we're going to look at that here in just a couple seconds. I mean, there are lots of role models we could look at. Um, we could look at Peter because he was really good about sticking his foot in his mouth. Or maybe we could look at Thomas because, um, again, he was a, someone who doubted a lot. So why are we following Paul? And I think Paul really kind of answers this right here in 1 Corinthians 11. This is what Paul says. He says, follow my example. Now, I'm going to stop right there. Doesn't that kind of sound like bragging a little bit? Hey, follow the way I do life, right? Well, listen to this now. He says, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. The apostle Paul wants you to follow his example, because he tried his very best to follow the example that Jesus gave him. So if we're going to follow Paul in his example, there must be something in his life that he did that's worthy of following. And that's what we're going to look at over the next eight weeks. So we're going to start in the beginning. We're going to begin with his conversion story. I mean, the moment he first surrendered to Christ. His conversion story um, became one of the very first ones we read of in the New Testament. Paul was traveling to Damascus, and uh, his mission was simple. He was out to get these Christians, these people that were following. Actually, the real word is the way. He was out to arrest them, to harass them and make their life miserable and really try to persuade them from following this guy who was here and then he died and then he rose again to keep that whole movement from growing. And that was Paul's mission. He was simply out to destroy, if I can say this, the new church. These new Christians, the followers, he was out again to get rid of them. Paul is approaching Damascus, and all of a sudden it says in the scripture that a light appeared from heaven, and he hears a voice from Acts chapter 9. It says, this is what the voice says. It says, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Now, don't get confused, okay? Saul and Paul are the same person, and this voice that Paul hears is the voice of Christ. Saul. Why are you giving me a hard time? Why are you out there destroying people? Why are you out there doing this? Why are you out there persecuting me? And from that moment forward, Paul's life began to change. I mean, he had just encountered 
the living Lord on the road to Damascus. He was still blind, and he was still set on destroying the church, but now he had a new mission that was given to him by Jesus. Paul was blind, and he really couldn't see, but his life was about to be radically changed. And it was changed because he surrendered his life to the Lord. So that's what I want to talk to you about today. I want to talk to you about the essential quality of surrender. Now, over this series, we're going to look at lots of different qualities from Paul's life. Like, for example, the quality of grit. I mean, we don't talk about grit a lot, but it's that tenacity to keep moving forward even when it gets tough. We'll look at that here in a couple of weeks. And then there's a whole bunch of these qualities like joy when life isn't perfect. Um, there's a, the quality of being bold and standing firm and having the courage and leadership to move forward. Generosity. People don't realize this about Paul, but he was a generous person. Self-discipline and hope. I mean, those are important qualities. And that's why Paul can say, follow my example as I follow Jesus. Now, who in your friends list right now needs you to share this message with them? We're looking at some pretty important stuff. Man, who in your friends list could use, I mean, again, a message that's going to help them to be like Christ? Would you do that for me right now? I promise if you do, I will as well. So if you want to develop these qualities, these extra qualities of grit and hope and self-control and discipline. Look, it all begins with the first quality, surrender. And that's a tough word for us today, surrender. That means that I've got to give up control and give somebody else control. I mean, isn't that true? Surrender? I mean, I quit, I stop, and I allow someone else. That's what surrender is all about. It happened to Paul, and it needs to happen to all of us as well. So our first action, if we're looking at this in steps, okay, if we're going to surrender, it starts by surrendering to Jesus as your, what, personal Lord and Savior. This is where it all starts. Paul surrendered to Jesus as his Lord and Savior on the road to Damascus his conversion experience that we just talked about a minute ago. I mean, in that moment, Paul encountered Christ. He realized at that very moment that all the things that he was living for, well, they were the wrong thing. He realized in that moment that he had missed the entire purpose of his life. In that moment, Paul was again converted from being a persecutor of Christians to being persecuted as a Christian when he became a follower of Christ. Paul had a pretty dramatic conversion. Probably, more than likely, yours wasn't that dramatic. Or maybe you've not even experienced a conversion with Jesus yet. Maybe you didn't hear a voice from heaven or see a bright light that left you blinded. Maybe you just encountered Jesus in the quietness of your house, or maybe it was a church service. It doesn't matter what your conversion looks like. It just matters that you had a moment where you surrendered Jesus to be your Lord and your Savior. By the way, this is how Paul talked about surrendering. He said in Romans 10, he says, if you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Now, I want you to think about that phrase for just a second, openly declare. Jesus, what Paul was saying is, Jesus, you are now my leader, and I, I'm following you. I'm going to live my life for you. That's what it means to openly declare that Jesus is your Lord. I'm not in charge, and you are. That's what it means, again, to surrender. Secondly, believe in your heart. Now, 
when I talk about believing in your heart, that I'm talking about the same thing that Paul recognized, that God is who he says he is, and he is the only way to heaven. Now, if there was ever a guy that was all right, it would have been Paul. Paul was all right, okay? Paul had, um, he was all right spiritually because he was a, a Pharisee, okay? So he knew a lot about God. He was all right and because he was religious. I mean, he went to church, or if you want to call it synagogue or the tabernacle, he, he went to all of those pretty regularly. He was all right because he came from a pretty good family, and he did, again, do a lot of things for God. But what he had to do was surrender himself and his idea of what it was to what God says and how God wanted him to lead. Now, I can guarantee this. When you do what Paul did, when you surrender your life and when you ask God to forgive you, well, everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. So let me ask you, have you had a Damascus Road experience? And I'm not talking about the light, and I'm not talking about the voice. I'm talking about, have you surrendered to Jesus Christ, your life? Because that's the a first essential quality, again, of being a Christian, surrendering. Here's the second one. You have to surrender your old identity. Now, this is, this is where it kind of gets interesting here. Um, this means when you become a Christian, well, God says, I give you a new identity, and you can let go of the old one, the old one that was before you knew Jesus, the mistakes, the failures, all that. You can let go of it. Matter of fact, in, in 2 Corinthians, Paul said this about his new identity. It means that anyone who belongs to Christ becomes a, do you see it? New person. The old life is gone. That old identity is gone. And a new life has begun. In other words, if you've surrendered to Christ, you are a new person in Christ Jesus. It was true of Paul. His old life was gone. Paul, the Christian killer, Paul the Pharisee, Paul who thought he knew more than anyone else, Paul the arrogant, was now a new person. And Jesus gave him a brand new identity. And guess what? He does that for you. Matter of fact, this is Paul's new identity. I love how he explains this. He says this in, in Romans chapter 1. He says, this letter is from Paul, okay? Um, a slave of Christ Jesus. This is his new identity. I'm a slave of Christ Jesus, chosen by God to be an apostle and sent out to preach the good news. That's what Paul said. That's his new identity. I'm a slave. Now, I've got a funny question for you. How do you describe yourself on social media? I mean, whether it's Facebook or Snapchat or LinkedIn or Instagram, you know that section where you get to describe yourself in a few words? You know what I'm talking about. Uh, I like to golf. I like to fish. Uh, I like to go swimming. I'm a financial wizard. I'm the father of two, whatever. How do you describe yourself in a snapshot? I mean, if Paul had a Twitter account, okay, um, his snapshot would have looked, I'm a slave of Jesus Christ. Now, I know you're worried right now because you're thinking I'm going to ask you to go out there and, and, and correct your social media to say that you are a slave or a follower of Jesus. Well, maybe you should. I don't know. But I'm not going to ask you to do that. Paul had a brand new identity. Now, I want to just kind of go through this really quick with you. Do you, you know a lot about Paul or do you know a little bit about Paul? Here's just a little bit of his biography, if you want to call it. Paul was, like I said, a Pharisee. He was a Jewish religious leader. I always used to uh, describe Pharisees as the best of the best of the best. I mean, he was. He was way up there in, 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 in being a religious person. They were, the follow, or they were the strictest followers of the law, and I mean to the letter. That's what made Paul a little bit arrogant, by the way. 
He always thought he was a little bit better than everyone else because he was a Pharisee. Now, listen to this. Paul, his job, remember, okay, was to go out and arrest and execute followers of Jesus. Paul orchestrated the stoning of a guy named Stephen. And then he had that dramatic encounter on the road to Damascus, which changed his life. Listen to this. It changed his life, and he became um, a new person with a new identity, and he was a, a, a starter of churches. Now, we're not quite sure, but we know at least 14 different churches that Paul started with his new identity. He wrote 13 of the 27 books in the New Testament. Now, I want you to think about this. Paul didn't know that he was writing the New Testament. He wasn't going out there saying, I think I'm going to write the, the whole new Bible. What he was doing is he was writing personal letters to churches, mostly of, of which he had started, um, doctrinal issues, words of correction, and then they later became what we know as the New Testament. Paul was beaten. He was stoned. He was shipwrecked. He was imprisoned at least three different times, and eventually he was martyred for his faith in Christ. Now, this is important, okay? Paul did not surrender or convert to Christianity because it was easier. He didn't convert or surrender to Christ so he could make more money or so he could become more famous. In fact, when Paul became a Christian, when he surrendered to Christ, his life became immediately more difficult. He lost his job, lost his family, he lost the amount of respect that he had built up. He lost his position. He went from being a persecutor to being persecuted. He went from being the arrester to being arrested. Paul converted to Christianity because he had a life-changing encounter with Christ. Paul's life wasn't easy. He doesn't complain about his life. He doesn't say, oh, woe is me now that I'm a Christian. You don't hear him complain. Matter of fact, what you do hear him do is tell us to keep going forward. So about after 30 years after Jesus had been dead, Paul is executed. That, I mean, that is a brief snapshot, and we'll look at a lot of those events later on in this series, but that's a brief snapshot, the biography, if you want to call it, and I want you to hear these words because these are so good. I mean, all the things that Paul did, I mean, we can't even, we can't even put them um, together, but I want you to hear what he said. He said, I once thought these things were all valuable. This comes from Philippians chapter 3. I once thought all of these things were so important but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. See, Paul understood his new identity in Jesus, and he considered all the things that he had done, well, garbage, compared to his new identity. Surrender your old identity, and then what I want you to understand is you have a new life mission. A new life mission. In other words, I know that we all think that we have a mission, and it's usually dictated by what we want and what we want to do in our life. And look, you have a life mission that God has given you. Now, Paul, his life mission was to go out and take the gospel, the good news of Jesus, to people all around him, specifically to non-Jewish people, people like me, uh, the Gentiles, and, and that's what Paul did. That was his life mission. I don't know what God has called you to. I have no idea what God has called you to. I don't know what your life mission is, but I can tell you this. Whatever your life mission is, it's to bring honor and glory to Christ. That's what your life mission is today. I can't tell you exactly what it is, but I can tell you that your life mission ought to involve walking in a manner that is worthy of your calling in Christ Jesus. I can't tell you again what you're supposed to be doing specifically other than to glorify God in everything. So let me ask you once again, have you had 
a Damascus Road encounter with Jesus? I mean, that's where it starts. You surrender. And if you've never done that, you know you can do that right now where you're listening from. You can do that by simply asking and believing, just like Paul, Jesus to be who he said he is, to forgive you of your sin right there where you sit. Openly declaring, believing in your heart that, well, God sent his son to die on a cross so you could have a relationship with him. You can do that um, through prayer, and I'm going to lead you in prayer here in just a second. But there might be a lot of you out there that have already had your Damascus Road encounter. You're already a Christian and you're listening today. You know what your next step is? Have you surrendered your entire life to him? See, that's challenging for me because I'm a person that likes to surrender, well, the bits and pieces of my life that I find easy and hanging on to the things that, well, they're a little bit more difficult. I mean, have you surrendered total control to Jesus? I mean, that's our challenge, and that's a, that's a day-by-day challenge. I mean, surrender, when we start talking about surrender, yeah, I surrendered um, to Jesus a long time ago, 1976 to be exact. But I daily have to surrender. I have to surrender my schedule. I have to surrender my finances. I have to surrender my relationships. I have to surrender my work. I have to surrender everything about me every single day. Because if I don't, maybe that's why Paul, that same guy, describes ourselves that we're supposed to live our life as a living sacrifice. And you know what the problem with living sacrifices? As a living sacrifice, I'm supposed to put myself up on the altar and say, here I am, God, use me. But the problem with living sacrifices is a lot of times they want to crawl off the altar and go back and do their own thing. And see, Paul reminds us that we have to surrender to his control every single day. So I'm going to pray. First of all, I'm going to pray for those of you that maybe need a Damascus Road experience, and then I'm going to pray for us those who've had that experience, that we might learn to surrender everything to him every day. Would you join me um, as I pray? Father, thank you for the life of Paul. Um, What, again, a statement he makes. Um, Follow me. Okay, He's telling the readers to follow him as he follows Christ. And you, you changed him from the inside out to what you wanted him to be. God, there might be people here that are listening right now that have never, ever experienced that life transformation that can only be found in Jesus. And God, I pray that this would be their moment, their Damascus Road, a moment where you intercept their life, just like you intercepted Paul's right there. And God, that they would be receptive and ask you in this very moment to forgive them of their sins. And Father, to begin that life transformation um, in their heart, just like you did Paul, just like you did mine so many years ago. God, help me to be able to surrender every aspect, every thought, every deed, everything, God, for your kingdom's sake. God, I pray that you'll empower those that are listening today to make that prayer of commitment. And it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, next week, we're going to get together and look at the second quality um, that Paul demonstrates for us that we ought to have in our life. Grit, okay? Hey, Paul was, uh, Paul was headed um, for some, well, we'll just say this, destruction, okay? And yet, when it really got hard, Paul didn't give up. He kept on marching through adversity. So what do you do when it gets hard? Got to come back next week. We'll look at Paul's life. And then we'll put it into practice in ours. All right. Until then, you guys have a great week and I'll see you back next week.